Today I'll show you how to cut and assemble this braided card that I call Snowflake. Hi guys, my name is Omar for Awesome SVGs and today I'll show you how to cut and assemble this braided card that I call Snowflake. Remember that you can download all files for free. These are free for personal use. Please guys, respect that. Um, and you can download them at www.awesomesvgs.com. Okay, so let's get started. First, I'll show you how to prepare your file um, upload it and prepare it to be cut on Cricut Design Space. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is upload our file to Cricut Design Space. So for that, click on Upload, then go to Upload Image, and then click on Browse. Navigate to the folder where your file is stored. This is braided cards snowflake.svg file, and click on Open. Here you can change the name or add tags to your file if you want to, and then click on save. To put your file on your canvas, you just click on it until you see that green outline around and then click on insert images. And there's your file on your canvas. There are two cards right here, the top card, which is the shaped card and the bottom card that is the square card. Um, we are going to separate both of them, so click on it and then click on ungroup and that will leave you with the top card group and the bottom card grouped also. If you want to cut just one of them, hide the one that you don't want to cut. We're going to prepare both of them though now. Um, first, the top card, um, click on it and then click on ungroup. And we need to change that top layer that says cut, that vertical line right here. We need to change the line type from cut to score. That will turn that cut line into a score line. And then we need to attach that score line to our cut line around. For that, you can do it, you can do it either way uh, by clicking and dragging a rectangle around both elements or by selecting the top one by clicking on it and holding the control key on a PC or command key on a Mac and clicking on the second layer. Once you have both of them selected, click on attach and that will attach that score line to that cut line. Um, for the second card, select that one and click on ungroup. That will take all three elements to the top of the stack and we need to do the same thing, change that cut line to a score line and then attach that, cut, that uh, score line to the uh, card base right here. So for that, click on the top layer, hold the control key on a PC or a command key on a Mac and click on the second layer. And you can do this also by clicking a dragging a rectangle that includes both elements and once you have both of them selected, you can click on attach. That will attach that score line to that uh, cut line around. Next, uh, click on make it, and you can cut both cards from a single eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock. Uh, but what you need to do is just to save some paper, click on the rotate icon right here and drag that top shape to the top left corner and then put the right shape, the card base, and um, drag it to the left. That way you will be able to cut both cards from a single eight and a half by 11 inches sheet of, of cardstock. Here's your second mat that you can also cut from a single letter size paper. Then click on continue, cut your pieces and assemble. I'm going to show you how to put together the shaped card first. There are three pieces, the base card, the contrasting panel, and the braided panel. The card base has a scoring line on one of the points. So grab this one first and fold it to both sides using a bone folder to make sure the fold um, uh, works properly when you open the card. Give it a couple of passes of that bone folder and make that crease very sharp. 
clicking on the braided panel. So take that panel, the one that has all the cuts, and start with one section. You are going to um, take the largest flap on one of, of one of the sections and fold it towards the um, opposite side by lifting it and then pushing with two fingers on each of the bases. Do that with the first flap. Then skip the second one. And then take the third one and do the same as you did with the largest one. So lift it, fold it towards the opposite side and press with two fingers on the base. Then skip the fourth flap and do the same with the fifth one. Lift it and push towards the opposite side with two fingers at the base of that flap. Use a bone folder to um, make those creases very sharp so that they stay down. I'm using a Teflon bone folder that has a round edge and that is great for this project. Remember that all the products I use are linked on the video description below. Next, take the next section and do the same thing that we did with the previous one. Fold the largest flap, the first one, fold the third and the fifth one. And next, start braiding the sections. Put the um, third flap underneath the second one of the previous section and uh, the third one underneath the fourth of the flaps of the previous section. Repeat the same process all around. You can leave the braiding like this, but personally, I like to um, glue down all those small points, all the small flaps. And for that, I use a multimedia mat. This is a glue that will hold the cardstock down and that it will make the final project look a little bit more uh, polished. So add a small, very small amount of glue on each of the corners. and then glue down all those small points. You can do that by holding it down with your fingers for a little while, but I like to use um, sewing clips for this. It's a great way to um, make sure the those small points uh, are glued down correctly. Next, we're going to glue the contrasting panel to the um, card back. So put some glue to the gluing corner, to the gluing tab on the card back, and glue the um, contrasting panel on the card back. Just remember that the contrasting panel is just a little bit smaller than the card back. So um, center it remove any excess glue that might have oozed out. And I like to use also um, some sewing clips to make sure that um, the fold is 
uh, free and that no glue has um, glued both panels together outside that uh, gluing tab. And next you're going to add glue to the back of the Breda panel. Um, just to add glue to all of those um, thick cardstock sections, the center and the um, each of the corners. It's very important that you add, put um, enough glue for the um, for all the edges to uh, be adhered to the contrasting panel. I'm using Aline's um, tacky glue. This is the Turbo version. It's a great glue that it will glue it. Uh, glue the braided panel down almost instantly. You will have a small amount of time to um, reposition it uh, in case you need to. And then you will add the braided panel to the contrasting panel. Um, it's better to do this um, by grabbing by grabbing the contrasting panel and putting it over the braided panel. Remember that this panel is a little bit smaller than the braided panel, so it doesn't um, show from the front of the card. So center it, remove any excess glue from all edges, and you are good to go. I like to use a bone folder, also that uh, rounded edge of the bone folder to glue it down and make sure every um, all the surface sticks to that uh, contrasting panel. And there you go. You can leave this card as it is, or you can embellish it using um, rhinestones or enamel dots. I used for the shaped card um, adhesive, um, self adhesive uh, rhinestones. I used a larger one for the center and smaller ones for each of the points of that shaped card. And there you go. Um, there's enough space on the inside of the card for you to write a message. And it looks pretty good, I think. For the square card, you're going to braid the um, front elements like you did on the shaped card, but you're also going to fold the card in half following that score line that uh, your machine drew in the middle of the card. Use a bone folder to make that crease very sharp. And this bone folder um, will also help you to flatten the elements of the braided uh, panel uh, down. You will then take your contrasting panel and feed it through the slots that your machine cut on each corner. Make sure the corner goes in completely and that that contrasting panel is uh, flat against the um, front element. I also glued down these small flaps using that multimedia mat. I think the look is a lot more polished when you do that, but it's really up to you. And then I finally added a small gemstone um, using that multimedia mat. The tool that I'm using here is an Uchida um, dual picker. It has a silicon point on one end, the other end is smaller for smaller elements, and it's great for picking up uh, small jewels or um, enamel dots and stuff like that. As you can see, it holds uh, very well, and you can position it where you want. And that's all you need to make these uh, stunningly beautiful cards. I hope you gave them a try. Um, if you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. If you do, don't forget to hit that bell button next to the subscribe button so you're notified every time a new video is uploaded. I hope you have a great day. 
Thank you for watching and I'll see you again very soon. Bye bye.